After weeks of trying to deflect criticisms over his handling of the incursion of China in the West Philippine Sea, President Rodrigo Duterte found an ally in the person of former Senator Juan Ponce and Vile. We'll talk about this and more here at the place where journalists and newsmakers meet to discuss pressing issues that matter to you. Welcome inside the press room. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us inside the press room. Ako po si Romel Lopez, ang region's editor ng press1.ph at kasama ko po rito sa loob ng press room ang ating editor na si Felipe Salbosa. Hello pe. Hi, good day Romel. At mapalad tayo na samahan tayo ng isang veteran journalist para pag-usapan itong napapanahong issue about sa West Philippine Sea at nakitang bagong kakampi ng Pangulong Duterte pagdating sa kanyang polisiya sa pag-handle ng Patuloy na pagpasok ng China sa ating exclusive economic zone. Please welcome inside the press room, veteran journalist Marites Vito. Hello ma'am Marites and welcome to the press room. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Ayan. Uh, mainit na mainit na issue to no? kasi bigla tayo nagulat oh. na of all... Uh, medyo medyo no? starstock ako kay, kay, ano, kay Marites Vito. <laughs> Naku naman, Ipe. Ngayon lang tayo nag-meet. Ano? <laughs> Ngayon lang po. Excited po kami magtanong sa inyo. Mang nababasak namin na, ito na, ano, na pag-aaralan sa journalism school. Oh, <laughs> hot seat pala ito. Oh. So siguro ma'am, uh, start, uh, simulan natin doon sa nasulat ng libro uh, dahil na-document niyo yung uh, legal struggle natin yung ng, ng Pilipinas para sa pag-assert ng ating rights sa exclusive economic zone. At specifically doon sa libro, Uh, na-mention nyo, na, na-interview nyo si former Senator Juan Ponce Enrile, who was at that time, uh, I think yung mga inputs niya as former Senate President yung kinuha nyo, right? Pero uh, in a recent interview sa DZMM Teleradio, he denies na nagkausap kayo at in-interview nyo siya. Anong reaction nyo rito? Hindi, ang, ang sabi niya, pinakinggan ko uli yung kanyang interview, sabi niya he cannot recall na I interviewed him or he gave me an interview. So, parang sinasabi niya, hindi ko matandaan na nakausap ko siya. Sana yung follow-up question, nakita niyo na ho ba yung libro niya, nabasa niyo? Kasi yun yung magiging basis. But anyway, uh, so ang actually kasi nung narinig ko si Sen- former Senator Enrile na with his conversation with Duterte, sabi ko, sandali, there's something wrong. Kasi na, na-interview ko siya and I remember he told me another thing. Parang opposite. So kaagad, first, kasi hindi naman ako nakikinig sa gabi. I, I, I uh, do it first thing in the morning. So I, tinignan ko yung libro. Sabi ko, I must, have, I must have interviewed him. Kasi I remember ibang sinabi niya sa akin. Mm-hmm. So yun nga. Ang sinabi niya sa akin, 2012, he, kasi I really wanted to ask Senator Enrile, ano ang inputs niya, ano ang nangyari doon sa crucial cabinet meeting noong June 2012 after China took over Scarborough Shoal. Yun talaga mm-hmm. yung gusto kong malaman at least from two sources present in the cabinet meeting. Mm-hmm. So na-interview ko siya at saka si Mar Rojas. So mm-hmm. medyo similar yung kanila accounts pero mas, mas uh, very specific yung kay Enrile na ang tanong ni Pinoy, shall we go multilateral or just remain, uh, we will just keep this conflict on a bilateral level. Mm-hmm. So ang sagot ni Enrile, which he told me was, we should, the Philippines should assert its sovereign rights without foregoing bilateral talks. So it was a strong position compared to what he told President Duterte na huwag nating antagonize ang China. So ngayon, kung hindi niya matandaan nga na na-interview ko siya, <laughs> eh, meron namang reminder. Sana, Senator, bumili na lang kayo ng libro. Nandun yung date, <laughs> yung year. Yeah. And I remember going to your Dasmarinas Village residence. You were very accommodating. I enjoyed yes, ma'am. It. Kindly describe uh, yung, ano, yung interview ninyo, yung appointment ninyo with the Senator. Alam mo, he's always been accommodating. to. I think sa akin, I've done a, a number of interviews with him. 
So pinapunta niya ako sa bahay niya. Retired na siya noon eh. Wala na siya sa politics. Las mm-hmm. Marinas Village. Very friendly. Pinakita niya sa akin yung mga new books niya on geopolitics. He's, he's well read. Mm-hmm. And nagulat ako na very lucid po siya. This was in November 2016. Mm-hmm. Nung nag-uumpisa pa lang ako mag-research ng book. At saka ang so makwento and then pinakain pa niya ako ng if I remember right to Ron. Kasi sabi ko, sir, this is such a wonderful merienda. <laughs> so very, kaya nung narinig ko siya nagsasalita with Duterte, sabi ko, sandali, iba yata yung naisulat ko. <laughs> iba yung sinabi niya. In fact, di ba sabi niya doon sa libro ninyo, ang sinabi ni Senator Enrile, was, he even suggested consulting our allies. Yes. Right? Yes. Kasi nga, yun yung, basta huwag nating i-give up daw yung bilateral consultations, pero let's international, okay siya to internationalize the issue. So, well, uh, yun lang, nagulat ako na hindi niya matandaan na nakausap ko siya. So Senator, this is a 180 degree, <laughs> ano? this is a 180 degree turn ano, from his position in 2012. Oo. At saka also in, in Rock Solid, dun sa libro, nung Nung ni-research ko naman nung time ni Marcos, uh, in-explain ni, ni Enrile bakit legal ang, ang pag-takeover ng Philippines ng ibang features ng Spratly. So very clear naman yung legal explanation niya, which I quoted in the book. So mm. siguro yon naman hindi niya madedenay na sinabi niya yon Kasi that's, he gave it, uh, I think, in a Senate hearing or in a speech. Hmm. So did you, did you find it surprising talaga ma'am na all of a sudden ganito siya na dinidinay niya at hindi ganito yung stand niya? Well, yun nga nag, nagulat ako sabi ko sandali, parang iba yata ito. Pero yun nga if you look at the big picture naman hmm. of Senator Juan Ponce and Rile, hindi naman isolated case ito. Kasi of course West Philippine Sea is hot issue. But hmm. if you look at the other uh look at his history in politics, hindi nga ito isolated. Remember, uh, nakwento ko na to sa ibang mga journalists. 1986, mga bata pa kayo, nagko-cover ako ng EDSA 1. EDSA 1. Doon ako sa Defense Department. Doon ako mm-hmm. nag-hang hang out. Hindi ako umaalis. Tapos si, Dute- si Enrile nag-press con. Yung very tearful, remorseful, nag-reveal na siya na um tawag dito yung he was ano uh, ambushed he was mm-hmm. ambushed pala mm-hmm. ng martial law didn't really happen it was only used as a pretext to declare mm-hmm. martial law mm-hmm. do you remember that time or you you were still in high school small kids <laughs> <laughs> oh my god ang bata niyo naman so yun yung that was for me Uh, revealing. And then, nung nabasa ko yung autobiography niya, sabi ko, sandali, iba na, iba ito. Iba na naman. <laughs> iba. And I even had to ask the some colleagues who were there, who covered, mm-hmm. and they came out with their own accounts. So sabi namin, oh, this is not a factual thing to put in an autobiography. Mm-hmm. Autobiography ba yun? A biography. I think it was a biography, no? It's an autobiography. Yeah, autobiography. published by ABS-CBN Publishing, I think. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I have a copy so of that. Yeah. That, for me, was a very first, uh, a very concrete experience with Enrile na bumaliktad siya. It's a tendency to flip-flop, no? Yun. Very, pero yun, that's so important. Kasi yeah. sinabi niya yun sa buong mundo, sa buong Pilipinas, mm. noong 1986. And then you take mm-hmm. it back. In an auto in an autobiography. You you were covering for Business Day at that time. Yes, that Business correct? Day. Oh. And may I just say I was a rookie, a very young reporter. <laughs> so if you put my you compute my age, hindi naman ganon katanda. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi ako business world naman ako nagstart oh, right. na the successor, okay. the successor of Business Day. I oh. see. Mm-mm. Second Ma'am, generation na. Mom, um, okay. Um, uh, kasi tung tong uh, sudden appearance ni Senator Enrile sa West Philippine Sea issue, laging kasama yung animosity between him and Senator Trillanes. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So, how do we explain this to the public? Laging meron, laging seeing it si Senator Trillanes eh, and his role uh, during the back-channeling efforts that he says he was told by President Aquino to do. Alam mo, hindi ko rin ma- masyadong maintindihan yung lalim ng galit ni Enrile K. Trillanes. Kasi away nila ito sa Senate, remember? Mm-hmm. Away nila ito at nag-walk out. Sino nag-walk out? Si Senator Trillanes nun. Anyway, matindi yung away nila. Pero na, tuloy, for me nawawala yung main story which is yung mm-hmm. nangyari talaga sa Scarborough Shoal. Mm-hmm. So ang tingin ko, side issue ito. It's political, it's domestic, it's it's a... Uh, Kung baga, kasi kung you look at the big picture, merong noise, merong hmm. the real thing. So nung research ko tong book, I looked at the notes of Senator Trillanes sa back channel. He documented naman most of it or all of it. So bin- binanggit ko lang sa book, pero hindi ko makita yung impact nito sa Scarborough Shoal. Kasi nga, it's so hard eh. Back channel talks. Hmm. Hindi ko naman... malaman kung talaga bang umatras yung mga ships ng China kasi hindi sila umatras. Eh. 20 plus sila. I didn't know, there was no documentation on whether they were 50 at first or they were 20 later. Unlike dito, nang, ngayon nababantayan na sa Julian Felipe Reef from 200, nagiging 100, nagiging 20. At that time, all the Navy was saying was 20, at least 20 ships. So there was no parang day-to-day or week-to-week monitoring at that time. So, hin- mahirap sabihin eh. But in fairness to Senator Trillanes, he was really designated by President but, Aquino through Ochoa as hmm. Executive Secretary Ochoa as a back channel because kasi nga, fre- very, see, as we know, Pinoy is very a personalistic president also. He likes to work with people he's comfortable with and hmm. Sonny Trillanes happens to be a guy whom he enjoys, I think, the chemistry with. Mm-hmm. Uh, si Senator Enrile seems to be really invested in that issue. In fact, he obtained a copy of the notes of the ambassador, Sonia Brady. Mm-hmm. Right? So, invested in talaga siya dun sa issue. In fact, he, diba, the, I think the reason why Trillianes walked out was he was going to read from the notes of Ambassador Brady. Right? Yes, correct. Yun nga ang tiisip ko, bakit ba, bakit ba galit na galit si, si Senator Trillanes? And I'm sorry, Senator Enrile dito sa, why is he, why was he so keen on that issue? Which did not happen to him personally. It happened to a diplomat in the defense, I mean, in the foreign affairs department. So hindi ko rin alam yung buong storya doon. Okay. Yung, ma'am, yung, okay. Um, the critics of, um, the previous administration keep on harping on um, the supposed uh, blunder committed by Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Albert De Rosario, no, as regards the supposed deal between the Philippines uh, and China brokered by the U.S. So can you clarify, ma'am, kung ano ba talaga yung nangyari dito and you know, how should we uh, approach this issue? Oh, yan kasi... Ang ginagawa naman kasi ni President Duterte and this administration is to blame the, mm. the former administration. Shouldn't they blame China for grabbing Scarborough mm. Shoal? But anyway, dun sa research na ginawa ko for the book, ang nag-initiate ng negotiations with China was Kurt Campbell, who was then Assistant Secretary at the State Department, and siya yung top diplomat nila for East Asia. So, si Kurt Campbell was watching the developments in Scarborough Shoal and he took the initiative to arrange a meeting with Fu Ying. Fu Ying was a former ambassador of China to the Philippines and she rose up the, the ladder in the diplomatic circles in China. I don't know if she was in the party or in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Anyway, Kurt Campbell and Fu Ying met in a hotel outside Washington, D.C., in Virginia. And this was reported by the Financial Times. Sila lang ang nakita kong nag-document nito. And then Kurt Campbell announced, or the state, some, their sources in the State Department 
told them that there was an agreement reached between Campbell and Fu Ying that the Philippine and Chinese vessels would leave. There was also another reason. Bagyo na nun. This was in June. Mm. Malaka, malakas na malakas na yung bagyo. Lumalakas na yung bagyo. At uh, kailangan ng sumilong yung mga ves vessels on both sides. So, if, e, any, any progress sa negotiation, tinatawagan ni Kurt Campbell, si Ambassador Jose Quisha, who at the time was our ambassador in Washington, D.C. Campbell would also call Secretary Albert Del Rosario. And Quisha would also call Del Rosario. Even though it was like a three-way thing, mm -hmm. but the, the, the only one physically negotiating or physically present was Kurt Campbell with Fu Ying. So there was no Philippine representative there. Mm -hmm. um, so ang nangyari, nung inannounce na na both nag-agree na both parties should leave so umalis na yung Pilipinas I was able to interview the, the Coast Guard commandant at that time sinabi niya na talagang they had to leave because of the typhoon mm -hmm. and then eventually they were told not to return anymore <laughs> so ang nangyari dininay ni Fu Ying sabi niya there was no such agreement in fact, nung nag-withdraw ang Philippine vessels, it, um, nag, nandun pa rin yung Chinese vessels, ang umalis lang were the fishing boats ang naiwan mm. yung paramilitary vessels ng China. Mm. So in a way, totoo na may umalis. Pero mm. only the fishing boats. Okay, so nandun pa rin sila. So Del Rosario, Quisha would call Campbell. Ang sabi ni Campbell, Pressure nila, I don't know who naman in China ang tinawagan nila or pressured. And sabi daw, give us, parang give them a few days. And a few days turned into eternity. Hindi <laughs> na sila umalis. So for me, kung uh, there was good faith dun sa negotiations involved uh, in US and China and then informed naman yung Philippines. But maybe in the future, knowing how China is uh, so difficult to negotiate with and deal with. Maganda siguro meron na in, in person na representative ang Philippines mm -hmm. or maybe I don't know something in writing. Oh, we never parang, know. Eh. Don't just take the word of um, whoever is China's representative, right? Ganun, <laughs> alam mo that's na. true, huh? That's true because totoo yan, na I only realized na napakahirap pa lang makipag-usap sa Chinese officials when it comes to South China Sea. As mm. I was um, saying to Ian in the interview with mm. on ANC, sa lahat ng nakita kong declassified cables ng DFA, uh, memos, letters from our embassy in Beijing to DFA mm. Manila, there's a constant refrain. Sabi nila, it's a dead, parang they don't seem to see a resolution because China always takes the position that whatever is within the nine dash line is theirs. So, walang, walang middle ground, walang atrasan. So, napakahirap. Alam mo, paulit-ulit, mm -hmm. kaya paulit-ulit din ang protest ng DFA. Right. Remember nung time ni President Aquino, there was a time na almost every day, parang ngayon, yung nangyayari sa Julian Felipe Reef. Kaya nga may mm -hmm. Parallelism eh. Nag-protest ang DFA every day. Ganon din tayo ng Scarborough Shoal. So, very interesting yung parallelisms. Kaya it's not surprising if eventually they, they, they'll take over mm -hmm. uh, Julian Felipe Reef. So, I don't know kung ano ang situation ngayon, but they, they are still Chinese vessels according to the latest report. Kaya in a way, ma'am, no, na yung, yung pag-pursue ng bilateral talks talagang based in history na rin at pattern ng mga Chinese, walang patutunguhan. Kaya, si, kaya I think yun yung wisdom behind dun sa pag-file ng case sa uh, arbitral court ni President Noy Nayakin. No? Oo, alam mo pala, 1995, again, ako kindergarten pa kayo noon. Miss Chief Reef. Miss Chief, Chief, Chief Reef. Oh. Grabe, nagulat na, lang, <laughs> nagulat na lang si President Ramos na wala na yung Miss Chief Reef. Hmm. Pero alam mo, in in fairness to President Ramos and the DFA at that time, uh, I think Secretary Romula, they went to ASEAN. 
present nila yung case ng Philippines sa ASEAN. And ASEAN foreign ministers prepared a statement supporting the Philippines uh, and then voicing concern against China. So nakikita natin ang hirap pag bilateral lang. Mm-hmm. Na, talagang kung yun lang ang gusto ng... Di ba yun ang sinasabi ni President Duterte ngayon? Oh. Na gusto niya bilateral lang. May secret, ano, may usapan kami ni President Xi Jinping. Mm-hmm. Hindi pwede yun eh. Kasi uh, that's what the Chinese the Chinese government likes is to keep it within the two countries. Mm. Ma'am, aren't you amused no, that um, the supporters of the president and his, and his policy um, would tend to weaken the Philippine position just to prop his position, no, keep it up? No? And uh, do you, is this the, the first time it's happening in Philippine history? Uh, having, you know, you having covered diplomacy and uh, military and this particular issue extensively. Kasi uh, during President Arroyo's time, that was considered the golden age of the re- Philippine relations with China. But President Arroyo was not an out and out, although she, she uh, opened the doors of the Philippines to China. She was not out and out like Duterte you know, uh, napaka subservient to China. Mm-hmm. She mm-hmm. maintained relations with the U.S., with the Western powers. Mm-hmm. So, nagtatry siyang mag-balance. But, you could see na pinapasok niya ang Chinese investments. Mm-hmm. She agreed that China would uh, explore and survey uh, in that area in outside Palawan. That, uh, yeah, this was uh, invalidated by a Supreme Court decision, yes. I so think, see, right? President oh. Arroyo, pumayag siya na mag-joint survey ang Philippines and China dun sa for oil and gas. You know what happened, of course, is that Vietnam protested. Mm-hmm. So, to contain Vietnam, to appease Vietnam, sinama... Mm-hmm ng Philippines ngayon ang Vietnam. So, naging tripartite survey na. <laughs> Kasi, grabe, if you just keep it bilateral, talagang you'll create enemies. So, anyway, yung arrangement na yun sa Supreme Court, hindi pa dinidecide ng Supreme Court. It's been more than 10 years. Mm-hmm. Kung constitutional ba yun, yung pag-agree to a joint survey with China over the exclusive economic zone yun eh, ng Philippines. Mm-hmm. Pero ma'am, so may pattern din no, na yun nga, nabanggit natin kanina yung uh, bilateral talks with China. Eh, obvious na hindi talaga mabali ang China sa kanilang position. Uh, may nakita ka rin bang positive movement with ASEAN din? Hindi nala yan. Aside dun sa nakwento nyo kanina yung sa 1995 statement. Yung mga succeeding ASEAN conferences ba? Nakita nyo na buo yung suporta ng mga ASEAN members na maayos natin itong dispute na to or may mga nations na unti-unting sumas- sumasali na rin or kumakampi na rin sa China? Alam mo, mahirap yung ASEAN, lalo na ngayon, uh, kasi hindi, hindi united. So ang ally ng Philippines dito, ang strongest ally is Vietnam. And then, although nag-benefit ang mga claimant countries, ito sa arbitral victory ng Philippines. So it's mahirap umasa na maging unified ang ASEAN dito sa South China Sea issue. Pero pwedeng a group of countries within ASEAN, pwedeng mag uh, suggestion na ito ng ibang diplomats, ng ibang marine scientists, pwedeng magmanage ng isang environmental like a marine fish, a marine zone within South China Sea to be managed by like Malaysia, a claimant country, Vietnam and the right. Philippines. Pwede ganoon yung there are small steps pero mm-hmm. hindi kasi open ang Philippines sa ganito arrangement at this time. Mm-hmm. Walang major diplomatic moves. At may iba pang mga suggestions like for example, the Philippines and Vietnam can define already its maritime boundaries. Ito they, these things take time mga negotiations. Mm-hmm. Pero walang ganyang uh, efforts at this time. Uh, anong nakikita niyo scenario ma pag naiakyat to sa UN? Kasi parang yun na lang ang next step eh, no? after we got the arbitral uh, victory. So kung idadalin siya sa General Assembly ng UN ng Pilipinas, which obviously ayaw gawin ni President Duterte, or, although for the record, di ba, na-mention niya yun, 
during sa speech niya. Pero iba yung kung nag-file tayo ng formal resolution sa body, di ba? So ano sa tingin niyo magiging senaryo if and when na uh, idala to sa UN? Ang ang model kasi diyan yung case ng Nicaragua versus the US right. when mm-hmm. Nicaragua won yun sa International mm-hmm. Court of Justice. Pero ayon ng US magbayad ng reparations sa Nicaragua. So ang ginawa ng Nicaragua siguro tatlong I think they went to the UN General Assembly I think three times to file a resolution. Ito naman hindi naman ito binding eh but may parang is the sense of the General Assembly. So mm-hmm. I think tatlong beses silang pumunta doon at they got the support of the UN General Assembly. So mm-hmm. ang the US naman um, it cares it cared for its international reputation. So alam mo nagbayad sila sa Nicaragua but they, not, they did not call it reparations, they called it aid. <laughs> So, Ni ano yung nila na. Sa diplomacy kasi there are ways right. to go around this. So I think China cares for its global reputation kasi mm-hmm. I remember again part of the research dun sa libro nung during the arbitral uh, rule arbit ar, during the permanent during the arbitration tribunals mga hearings mm-hmm. they would send out opinion essays sa various publications in the world explaining their position. Hmm. Tapos nung nanalo yung Philippines, naglagay pa sila ng video sa Times Square in New York. Malaking wow. malaking video explaining their position and debunking the the victory of the Philippines. So I think they do care for their international reputation. Kaya importante nga yung sinasabi na sup- kunin ng Philippines ang support ng allies hmm. para there's additional pressure on China. Of course, this t- all takes time and a lot of diplomatic uh, work. Um, Ma'am, medyo mag-backtrack tayo, no? Uh, ibalik natin dito sa may, ano, sa may panahon ni uh, Pangulong Duterte sa unang zona niya. Uh, kasi na-mention niya sa unang zona niya na uh, we cannot move forward now. We allow the past to pull us back. So, sinabi pa niya, finger pointing is not the way that is why I will not waste my precious time dwelling on the sins of the past. Uh, I think parang naging ganito yung nangyayari ngayon. No? Na yung itong sinasabi nila na parang depensa nila sa nangyayari sa South China Sea, ang sinasabi nila at ni, ano, ni uh, Senator Enrile, huwag niyong sisihin si Pangulong Duterte. Kasalanan niya ang present administration. Well, in fact, uh, I think nakikita naman natin dun sa mga sinasabi nila former Justice Carpio na Nasa inyo na ngayon, nasa, kayo yung nasa may posisyon, kayo dapat yung may ginagawa. So, uh, nakikita nyo ba na effective itong uh, strategy nila na kumuha sila ng sa tingin ni Pangulong Duterte ay legal luminary para depensahan siya? Uh, siguro nga, nung, uh, sabi ng isang friend ko, Marites, hindi tayo ang audience niyan. <laughs> ang audience niyan, yung conversation ni Duterte at ni Enrile, he, it's not you know, the academe, the middle class. Pero sabi ko, eh, nag-i-English sila eh. So kasama na rin tayo doon. But anyway, yung sinasabi na, I, I remember na, yung victory ng Philippines nangyari kasi, di ba, after Aquino left office. Hmm. And I remember, ina-expect ng BFA under President Aquino na mananalo only on the nine dash line but anyway malaking victory so before umalis yung last foreign affairs secretary naka communicate na sila sa Europe US Asian hmm. allies na at prepare na ng statement kung manalo ang Pilipinas ipapadala nila tong statement and then with the support of kunyari Japan Australia US EU of course, it never happened. Hmm. So, yun sana yung next move nga to get the support of the international allies. So, hindi naman ginawa ni Duterte yan. So, pinatubog to build lang pressure, na. no? To build pressure against Correct. China. Oh. Yes, kasi nga, alam mo, it, it, I'm trying also hard to understand, bakit ba masyadong malapit si Duterte sa China? Pwede ka namang maging friendly to China, 
without antagonizing other powers. Right, right. It's super... Ma'am, yan yung pinakamalaking tanong talaga eh. Oh, Ibang taon na natin mga sinasolve. Very no? interesting Bakit yung ganun? question na Alam sinasabi. Mo, yan, nung bina- so, I had to go back. Binasa ko yung biography ni Duterte, written by Earl Pareño, yung Beyond Will and Power. Interesting kasi yung kanyang supporters sa Davar were mainly those who gave him financial support for the campaign were mainly Filipino-Chinese businessmen. Mm-hmm. So very comfortable talaga siya sa company nitong mga Filipino-Chinese businessmen. And if you remember, I think was this in 2016 nung sinabi ni Duterte, joke ito, joke niya, pero makikita mo na it comes from his experience. Sabi niya, ayoko nga makipag-meeting dyan sa mga Amerikano eh. Tubig lang ang sinaserve sa'yo. Pero pag meeting mo ang mga in-check, mga Chinese, buffet. Ano ba yung buffet sa... Yung Laureate? Sa... Laureate. <laughs> Laureate. Alam mo, nagulat ako kasi bagong presidente lang siya. Nasabi ko, ah, so it must be a very personal thing for him. Foreign uh, policy see. is not mm-hmm. geopolitical. It's not uh, what the big picture is. So foreign policy arises out of his personal friendships pala. Mm-hmm. Kasi bakit mm-hmm. hindi niya binifriend ang India? Mm-hmm. India and China are, are powers in the region. Hindi niya, hindi siya... He doesn't talk about India, doesn't talk about Indian food. <laughs> Wala, it's China, China, China. China, China, China. China. Asian countries, eh, na trading partners din naman natin. Uh, parang hindi siya ganun ka-warm compared sa China. Talagang ano, very, kaya shocking nung 2016 talaga. Nagulat na lang tayo nung he declared uh, his love for China and Xi Jinping. Buong, mun, buong mundo. I mean, that was a very revealing... So, siguro, it's really personal. So, hindi na natin maalis yun. And of course, may... I remember nung nanalo si Duterte and he visited China for the first time, may photo ng group of, I think, mainland businessmen, Chinese businessmen. May hawak na malaking uh, streamer, friends of the Philippines or something. That's very striking kasi... So they supported him in what way? We can only speculate. So may fr- there's really personal friendships involved. We can say, ma'am, na si Pangulong Duterte is uh, an outlier when it comes to his foreign policy. No? At saka, kumbaga, ano eh, hindi, wala siya dun sa, ano, wala siya dun sa trend of um, Philippine presidents who have basically carried out pro-American uh, uh, foreign policies. At saka, di ba isipin mo din yung benefits na makukuha mo? Iwa hmm. way mo din. At saka, you have to balance between the powers. Right. Diba, sabi ni, wasn't it Loxin who said, friends to all, enemies to none? Mm-hmm. So hmm. dapat ganun yun eh. Ganun yun yung diplomacy unless of course okay. uh, there are things that... <clears throat> Be, are beyond our control. Pero balancing act talaga, pero hindi, talagang masyadong malapit si Duterte sa China. And and eventually, makikita natin na, kasi as of yung pledges ng investments, mm-hmm. a certain percentage lang eh. And then dun sa construction projects, dalawang bridges. Mm-hmm. So mama itemize yan. Uh, I've, I've just been looking, wala pang... Uh, like final work on this pero marami nang sumusulat mga scholars na hindi naman natupad yung pledges na ang dami-dami ng China. And remember, ang number one official donor, source of official um, donations natin is still Japan. Hindi naman uh-huh. na-eclipse yan. So vaccines uh, out of uh, supposedly more than 20 million that we will buy from China, 1 million yung donated Correct. So, kumbaga, yes. China will still earn from us even if they donated 1 million doses, right? Exactly. So, hmm. yun nga yung, alam mo, ma- mahusay din kasing narrative ng ating government, di ba? Marunong sila. I mean, they're very good, snabi nila. Oh, ma- utang na loob yan. Binigan tayo ng 1 million doses hmm. ng vaccine. So, utang na loob natin yan. I, I also find it amusing 
na itong namang US Embassy, very proactive in announcing every uh, donation or <laughs> grant or oh, program no, no, that they're no, giving okay. to the Philippines, no? Oh. To the point na, you know, yung social media nila very active, no? For example, when the Pfizer doses arrive, talagang malaking announcement, coordinated announcement, mm -hmm. no? Parang for the first time, nagahabul sila. Yes. No? Alam mo, totoo naman yan eh. Kasi ang galing ng... Ang China, hindi na sila nag-worry ng kanilang publicity. The Philippines, Philippine government yes. does it for them. So, <laughs> for free. <laughs> oh, so, in, so dapat talaga humabol yung mga ibang bansa, like US. Mm -hmm. Alam mo, totoo yan na ah, 1 million lang ang binigay na donation, pero bibili tayo ng 25 million. Mm -hmm. Di ba yung kunyari, pumunta ka sa isang hospital o clinic, magbibigay ka ng sample para bilhin mo yung products ko. Mm -hmm. Di ba parang mm. sample lang yun on a yes. big scale? Um, And mm. then, let's not lose uh, sight of the fact na talagang the US naman is the biggest donor to COVAX. Right. Mm. Yung pinakamalaking. Yes. And yung announcement ni President Biden two days ago, na in addition to the 60 million AstraZeneca doses na i-donate sa buong mundo, I mean, hindi pa, I mean, we're just one of the countries magdadagdag pa ng 20 million doses ng Moderna, J&J, at saka Pfizer. Also for the rest of the world. And then sinabi pa ni Biden, we are not asking for anything in return. <laughs> Naisip ko lang, natawa ako kasi, di ba sabi ni Duterte, oh, bigyan nyo kami ng vaccines, i-renew natin yung visiting forces agreement. So ngayon, I wonder, hindi ko na narinig yun. Hindi na niya nauulit. Kasi darating na yung mga vaccines without daw asking for anything in return. So I don't know. Let's see how this plays out. Pero parang nangyayari tuloy, ma'am. Nagkakaroon na rin ng propaganda war aside dun sa vaccine diplomacy. So yun nga, nabanggit mo yung gobyerno na natin ang gumagawa ng publicity for China. Samantalang may mga comment niya ako na nabasa eh, yung nabanggit mo ipe na pag-post ng US Embassy na parang pinangungunahan daw ng US Embassy kasi baka makredit grab yung donation. <laughs> may pumunta doon sa sa airport at mag-post, magpo-picture at sabihin dahil sa kanyang ano, sa kanyang trabaho kaya na, nakapag-donate ang US government. Remember, wala tayong naririnig ha, na iba from announcements from the Philippine government okay. thanking hmm. The U.S. for its donation wala. to COVAX? Wala, wala. 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 So, wala kaya the U.S. government is doing it for itself. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I think na tanggap na nila yung, ano, no, yung reality na under this administration na hindi sila makakaasa ng... They're not, they're not front and center in our, ano, <laughs> in our affairs. And take note, di ba? Early into the Duterte administration, saan pinadala yung members ng PTV at PCOO para mag-training? On on uh, on communication. Yeah. Ah, and That's do you true. remember? You remember 2016, the anniversary of PDP Laban. They were still right. the, the mm. ruling party at that time. Siempre ang guest nila, a speaker from China who spoke about the books of Xi Jinping, the thoughts right. of mm. Xi Jinping, and mm. on the presidential table with Coco Pimentel right. and mm. the other PDP officers. Was were these Chinese uh, uh, diplomats and guests? Mm. What a, that was the first in our history of Philippine political parties. Mm. Mm. Nagiba na, nagiba na ng mundo. <laughs> Di na red tag yung mga communist niyon. Ay alam mo yeah, <laughs> mentioning red tag. Alam mo nag meron akong feeling na kaya hindi kaya masyado ang intense ang focus sa Philippine communists. Kasi yun na magiging, yun ang threat natin. Nawala na sa threat horizon yung Chinese aggression in West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. Kasi I remember, uh, four years ago, 2015, I think, when National Security Advisor General Cesar Garcia, sa time of Pinoy, ha, said in a testimony sa Senate natin na China is the looming number one threat to the country. Mm. And then number two, I think, is the local communist insurgency. So mm. he was saying, let's, let's now re rebalance. Let's mm. look at a new, uh, a new ge geopolitical environment. 2015 yata yun eh. Nagbago na ngayon. Com local communist na lang ang threat. Wala na yung Chinese aggression. <laughs> I think that's the reason for all this 
uh, fo intense focus on local communists is so that we don't think of China as an aggressor, as part hmm. of the threat environment. Yun yung pivot, ma'am, no? Baka, so, baka last niya, question, think, how crucial, uh, mabigat ba ang epekto nitong West Philippine Sea issue sa 2022 elections? Both sa mga either tatakbong president or vice president, even senators. Sa tingin nyo, ganun ba kabigat to? Kung, kung marirelate nila itong uh, West Philippine issue sa issue ng pagkain, kasi ang yaman-yaman ng West Philippine Sea mm -hmm. in terms of fishery resources and na, na fish ng China, malaki ang... In fact, nakikita na nga ako ng news reports quoting scientists, scientific studies from the UP Marine Science Institute about the wealth nitong West Philippine Sea at magkano ang napupunta sa fishing magkano na po-poach ng China. So sa ganong, I think sa ganong gut issue, magiging mm -hmm. uh, election issue ito. Pero napansin ko ngayon, di ba napansin nyo din, I don't know, kahit na hindi binabanggit yung fishing issue na yan, pa nagiging um, uh, an issue of patriotism. Right. Parang mm -hmm. nagig there's a wave of patriotism on social media. Mm -hmm. Nagugulat nga ako na even a columnist of the Inquirer uh, wrote, um, Joel, I forgot his name. Anyway, sinabi niya yung mga dati niyang friends. Tony Butuyan, I think. To? Yes, Joel Butuyan. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that he The former partner of uh, Harry Roque. Ano, Harry Roque. Yes. Mm -hmm. he, he said that mga friends niya sa social media na dati na supportive of the of Duterte's pro-China policy mm -hmm. ay hindi na ngayon. So something must be turning. There, there's mm -hmm. this um, sense naman that the Filipinos uh, ha, are, are patriotic even if hindi nababanggit masyado yung issue ng food, food security tied to the West Philippines. Mm -hmm. And with that, thank you very much, Ma'am Marites Dito. It's really an honor for us na nasa, nasamahan nyo kami rito sa press room sa isang malalim na pag-uusap sa issue na to. Maraming Thank salamat. you, for your insights. Thank, thank you din at huwag nyo kalilimutan na nag-usap tayo. Ha? May date, may time, <laughs> <laughs> may documentation. One day when we write a book, we'll put it in the end notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at hindi nakakalimot ang internet, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Salamat din sa inyo. Thank salamat. you. Maraming thank salamat. You. Okay, bye. We'll invite you again sa future episode. Okay, thank you. At maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pagsama sa amin dito sa Press Room. Uh, uh, hopefully sa mga future episodes makasama po rin namin ulit kayo. Maraming salamat, Ipe. Thank you, Romel. At maraming salamat po ulit. Uh, hanggang sa muli po, ako po si Romel Lopez para sa Press Room. Ingat po tayong lahat. God bless.